For more on the U.S. men's national team, great to welcome into the show now, Jeff Carlisle. You can read his work over at ESPN.com. He's at home now, but he was in St. Louis for the game against Uzbekistan. And I was following Jeff on Twitter. And before the game even started, Jeff tweeted out something about the reaction from the crowd to the team intros. Okay, Jeff, I want you to tell me what the crowd reaction was to the player intros, to the manager intro, and what you made of it. Well, I mean, the, the player intros are the usual, you know, cheers, um, you know, big cheer for Christian Pulisic. Obviously, he's the best known U.S. player. Uh, but then when it came to Greg Berhalter, it was much more muted and there was a smattering of booze. I'm not going to say that the whole stadium was descending on Greg Berhalter and, and giving him grief, but you could you could hear some booze. And I, I think this is just reflective of the way uh, a vocal segment of the fan base feels right now. They are not happy to see Greg Berhalter return as manager. And uh, they, you know, they much would have, they would have much preferred to see the USSF hire somebody else. Um, but this is where the U.S. men's national team is right now. I mean, Greg Berhalter is the manager uh, for the foreseeable future. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have to see how things play out. But, uh, you know, clearly, you know, some of the fans there made their feelings abundantly clear. As expected, right? I don't think anybody here didn't expect that. We see the response online, and it's not just online. It's people shelling out their hard-earned money the people who went there voicing their displeasure. This is going to be par for the course, and at least until Greg Berhalter and this U.S. men's national team earn their way out of this. Yeah. What else was interesting, I think, is kind of the atmosphere in the stadium, right? Because we've seen this stadium packed for Major League Soccer. We've seen St. Louis sell a lot of tickets for U.S. soccer. I remember the U.S. women's national team played there. It was in Bush Stadium, a much bigger facility. Back in 2015, they had something like 35,000 fans. And yet, Jeff... Not only was the response what you're describing from those in the building, but it didn't seem like there was all that many people in this building. We've heard it's a soccer capital of the United States. Uh, as best as you can guess, why do you think U.S. soccer is having trouble filling a stadium for its men's national team in a city where we know soccer sells? Well, I don't think the opponent was was particularly attractive. I mean, you know, it's one thing if it's a, a Germany or an Argentina, uh, but if it's Uzbekistan, who I think were ranked seventy third in the world, seventy fourth somewhere around there, um, you know, that that that's not going to really move the needle if you're a, a U.S. men's national team fan. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the U.S. was there recently for the Gold Cup. And I, from what I hear, and, and granted, this is anecdotal. You know, some of the fans felt burned in terms of the, the team that the, the U.S. men's national team fielded in the Gold Cup. I mean, obviously, it was a B or even a C team. Uh, but on this occasion, it was it was as much of the A team that was available. I mean, the only starter, I think, who wasn't there was Tyler Adams, and he's injured, or at least coming back from an injury. So uh, I've also heard some complaints about the ticket prices, that it's just much too expensive. Uh, it's, just, it, it's just not an attractive proposition when you – you know, put together the opponent as well as how much money it costs to actually attend the game in person. And uh, it was a beautiful fall, or at least late summer weekend, I should say. And uh, obviously people decided they had better things to do. All right, we, we've heard these things about valid excuses, right? The ticket prices, the opponent, the time, the venue, et cetera. They're just not a popular team. The U.S. men's national team is not a popular team in their own country. The Mexican national team, the same team, Uzbekistan, they're taking them not to a soccer-specific stadium, but to Atlanta's stadium, Mercedes-Benz, a football stadium, and they're going to sell that place out. U.S. men's national team, for whatever the case may be, whether they just don't, they're not relatable with fans or there's not a likable uh, playing style or, or whatever the case may be, it's always something. The opponent. We need a good opponent. We need good prices. We need a good time of day. You need the perfect storm to sell out. The Mexican national team is a very popular team. They don't need those things. In a different country, it's very simple. You can say... Fans are being priced out, but there's a certain sector of fans in this country that aren't priced out. Why? The popularity. Hmm. Yeah, 15,000 in attendance in St. Louis to see the U.S. over the weekend, 53,000 uh, in attendance to see Mexico over the weekend. Very, very different numbers. Uh, let's change directions here a little bit and focus in on Major League Soccer. Of course, there is the tie-in with the U.S. men's national team when it comes to Bruce Arena as well. Took this team to 
two World Cups, 2002 and 2006. He's resigned as head coach and sporting director of the New England Revolution six weeks after he was placed on administrative leave amid allegations of insensitive and inappropriate remarks. In a statement, Arena said, quote, he made some mistakes and would be, quote, taking corrective steps to address what transpired. The Athletic is reporting that complaints filed by New England assistant coach Richie Williams were part of the MLS investigation into Arena's behavior. MLS released their own statement, which said, in quote, that the investigation confirmed allegations against Arena, or at least some of them, and that should Arena want to work at MLS again, he must submit a petition to the commissioner. Uh, Jeff, this has been the story that has kind of quietly rocked Major League Soccer for the last few weeks. I wonder kind of what else you're hearing, not just in terms of what happened with Bruce Arena, but also reaction from around Major League Soccer, because this is a historic figure in the league. Yeah, in terms of the reaction, I, I think there's universal dismay that, that this is how, at least outwardly, the, the career of a coaching icon in, in the sport of soccer in the United States is ending. Um, you can't find a, a negative word to be had, whether it's you know, assistant coach Sari Joseph, or whether it's former players, um, all of them, you know, some of them that I spoke to uh, basically just said that they can't believe it, it's ending like this. And, you know, they're, you know, they have great things to say about Bruce, uh, that he's a player's coach, uh, you know, that obviously his man management skills were, were second to none. And uh, obviously his track record of success in Major League Soccer. And with the men's national team, I mean, obviously, there's the one blemish in 2017 about not qualifying for the for the World Cup. But, uh, you know, it's people are just shocked that this is the way that it's ending uh, for, for a coaching icon. And so, uh, you know, there's a press conference tomorrow that Richie Williams is going to be leading uh, for New England. And so, I, you know, I suspect that, that will be an opportunity to find out more uh, whether any more information actually get to, gets divulged. I mean, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I don't even know where to start with this, guys. Uh, this blows my mind that the all-time winningest coach in Major League Soccer history and one of the winningest coaches in U.S. men's national team history, this happens, this situation, and it was five weeks ago, over a month ago, and they tried sweeping under the rug. It was just quiet. Uh, there wasn't too much information out there, no transparency. And apparently, per The Athletic, the accuser, Richie Williams, in this instance, was left in charge of the team. And while there's no information, you're led to let your mind wander and think, what could have happened? No details were out there. And now this happens, and they just kind of want it to go away. It, it blows my mind of where we're at, that in a country that is in an upward trajectory with football, this would happen and there's no fanfare for it. I mean, sir, sure, sure, you've seen a blip here or there on the reporting of it, but the fact that there's no more information out there and that Major League Soccer and the network that covers it would just, like, rather have it get swept under the rug mm -hmm. and move the news cycle blows my mind. And we will continue to have these conspiracy theories of what happened, what did not happen, until we get more details. Uh, Jeff, I want to ask you one more thing, kind of where this leaves the New England Revolution. They were having a decent season. Now everything's blown up. They they dropped a couple points on the weekend. They've sold Petrovic, the goalie. You know, where does this leave the Revolution after what had been a good start to the campaign? Now it looks like it's all falling apart. Yeah, it's a completely awkward situation. Um, you know, Carlos Heel was among the players who spoke well of Bruce Arena. And, you know, the, the players in, in that locker room almost to a man have, have said how much they respected Bruce and how much they appreciated playing for him. And so now it's a, it's a completely awkward situation, uh, especially as it relates to the report from the athletic that's out there, because if you're Richie Williams, how can you continue to lead this team uh, without further clarifying exactly what went down? So uh, I don't think it leaves the revolution in a good position at all. Um, one detail that I am hearing is that, the coaching staff is completely fractured. Um, hmm. You know, you've got some people in Bruce's camp, some people not. And so I think when the leadership of the team is, is sitting in that situation, uh, it's going to be very difficult for the team to move forward, for the players to move forward. Uh, so, you know, it's we're, we're seeing kind of a 
just an implosion before our eyes, possibly. I mean, obviously the, the, the team is still in a good position. They're, they're going to make the playoffs, but it just leads you to wonder, this was a season that was shaping up to possibly be something special in New England, and now that's just been completely thrown into turmoil. All right, there he is, uh, Jeff Carlisle, bringing us the latest on the U.S. men's national team, as well as Bruce Arena, who has resigned his post with the New England Revolution. Jeff, thanks so much for your time here on Football Americas. We hope to speak to you soon. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.